What's going on, everyone? Dots Gaming from DotsGaming.com here, and on behalf of Nemesis Esports, I am going to be bringing you guys a Stamina Necromancer PvP build for the Elder Scrolls Online Markarth patch. So if you guys have seen this build on my website, DotsGaming.com, this is my Plague Stamina Necromancer build. I've been running this version of the build for quite some time, and honestly, it has held up extremely well over the patches. I really have not not done very many changes to this build over the last patch or two um, maybe just some small optimizations here or there but for the most part it stayed relatively the same but i wanted to bring you guys the latest version of it for the mark Arth patch just so you guys can see what i am currently using now, like I always have said in my build videos in the past, guys, this is just what I like, what I use, and what works for me. If you guys would like to change something, use something else, mess with something, feel free to go ahead. But this is just what I've been running and what I have personally been finding success with. So kicking off the build, we are starting with two pieces of Malabeth. I absolutely love Malabeth for stamina necromancer stamp crow already has really really strong healing and by having malabeth on it just makes it even better so when you take damage you have a 10 percent chance to create a beam that steals 8300 health over six seconds from the attacker and while the beam holds you gain major vitality increasing your healing received by 16 percent the beam does break though if the enemy moves eight meters away and this effect can occur once every six seconds now even though minor uh excuse me major vitality was changed to obviously be 16 percent as opposed to the old version that it was i still think it's a very good monster set for stamina and a necromancer um i don't really feel like i need anything else from the build i mean if you want to get more offense you could go with an offensive monster set but i feel like still having the major vitality allows me to stay in the fight brawl it out and remain tanky for a long period of time in a patch where healing is absolutely garbage so i still do personally like malabeth for those reasons we are also running five pieces of ancient dragon guard i absolutely love ancient dragon guard for my stamp crow really really strong set in medium gives you a line of maximum health a line of weapon damage a line of weapon critical and it 289 weapon damage when you're above 50 percent health and 3300 resistance when you are below 50 percent health so it helps give you the offensive capability when you need it and it gives you the defensive resistance when you need it allowing you to heal yourself back up from being low hp to get towards higher health and getting back towards full so one of the great things about this set is that you know, right now, many classes do struggle with coming back from behind because healing is so shitty. And a set like Ancient Dragon Guard helps kind of remedy that, that situation by giving you a lot of resistance when your HP is low so that your heals are protected. The final set we are running for this build is Fury. I love Fury on Stamcrow because I love to brawl on my Stamcrow. And Fury just gives us huge amounts of offensive and defensive uh, capabilities by giving us a lot of maximum health stamina and weapon damage and when you take damage your weapon damage is increased by 23 for five seconds stacking up to 20 times this could occur every half second and upon reaching 20 stacks the duration is doubled but it's no longer be refreshed so it gives us an absolute boatload of weapon damage on the stamp crow build like i said giving us huge offensive and defensive capabilities now in terms of our you know traits and all that stuff i believe i am running a two heavy setup we are running a heavy chest and then a heavy shoulder and then we are running the rest are medium i'm currently running one two three four five pieces of impen and two pieces of sturdy i do really like the sturdy for my stamp crow i don't find myself dodge rolling on my stamp crow as much as i do on other classes i do find myself blocking a little bit more just simply because i do have that sword and board back bar and because the class is so good at brawling i find myself dipping into my block a little bit more but if you find yourself dodge rolling more you can go ahead and feel free to replace these sturdy pieces with well fitted if you want to i am running three prismatic glyphs and four stamina glyphs we are then running two robust and one infused. The two robust have weapon damage and the infused piece has the reduced stamina cost glyph for the extra sustain. Now, obviously, if you want to, you can run infused here instead of these robust. I know some people hate robust, so you can go feel free to run infused. But I personally have enjoyed the really large stam pool on my stamina necromancer. I feel like I get a lot of effective sustain from it just by having a huge resource pool. Allows me to block longer, gives me more stamina to just kind of play with. But if you're like dots, I hate that. I just want to go for the pure weapon damage stack, then feel free to replace these robusts with infused. We are also running a Nern Honed Maul on the front bar for the extra penetration and then the weapon damage obviously for being nern honed with a berserker glyph then on that back bar we are also running a nern honed weapon for the extra weapon damage with a restore stamina glyph and then we are running a reinforced stamina enchanted shield so we are that 2h smb uh weapon setup 
In terms of skills, we are, of course, using Dizzying Swing for our instantaneous damage, and then when we hit an enemy already off balance, because the first hit sets them off balance, we are able to stun them. You could also Medium Weave after the first strike in order to get your stun in as well, and if the target is immune to off balance, they are instead snared. So this helps, gives us our CC, helps keep targets close. Also, by proccing off balance, we are able to take advantage of Exploiter, from the ritual skill line giving us an additional 10 percent damage done we also have blighted blast bones this is going to give us a huge disease damage spike and it's going to be a strong burst combined with our dizzying swing and onslaught and also applying a major defile reducing their healing and health recovery by 18 percent also while creating a corpse on death so our big burst skill it is just you know mandatory run obviously on stamp crow just due to the incredibly strong damage as well as the major defile and like i said these two also combine really really well with onslaught so we do an instantaneous hit and with that hit ignores resistance and then grants us a penetration equal to the resistance that was ignored for five seconds. So with all three of those things hitting at the exact same time, we get an absolute big strike of damage. And if those things don't kill them, our executioner now basically is dealing true damage to that target and is just hitting them super hard. This also deals up to 400% more damage based off how low their HP is, below 50%. So it's just an incredibly strong execute to throw in after our big offensive combo. Now we do have Mortal Coil on our front bar for some massive healing. This also gives us a 3% healing done increase, so it does increase the heal of our rally, which is really, really nice. But this gives us a super strong hot over 12 seconds on a corpse. Also gives us stamina restoration over time. It's just an incredibly amazing skill that allows us to stay in the fight for a super, super long time. So I do love Mortal Coil. If you are in group play, though, you know, you can consider obviously taking off Onslaught and running Pestilent Colossus unless your group leader wants you to run Onslaught. But for just, you know, kind of solo BG play, I do prefer Onslaught. I run Hexproof on the back bar just to purge all those negative effects off me, and it also gives me 3% cost reduction. So between the cost reduction from Hexproof and the cost reduction for being an Imperial, we have an incredible number, uh, a credible amount of sustain, especially with the cost reduction from our Jewelry Glyph as well. Uh, and this also does purge a ton of effects off of us at a cost of a little bit of HP, so it helps us uh, remain tanky. So if we're trying to kite and we want to heal ourselves up with our hots, we can purge all of the dots off and allow our heals to actually go to work. Speaking of heals, Resolving Vigor, 16.5k heal over 4 seconds. Just our primo hot for the build, it's just what you run on a stam character. We also have a Spirit Guardian. Spirit Guardian is where a ton of our defensive capability comes from because it does give us a small heal, uh, heal you know, every two seconds, you know, 2.1k every two seconds, actually pretty good. And it also gives us our active pet at all times for our passives from the Necromancer class. But most importantly, this gives us 10% damage mitigation. Incredibly strong, a built-in 10% damage mitigation super super strong makes us incredibly tanky and is by far the best pet to run on the build we are running summoner's armor just to reduce the cost of our spirit guardian and our blight of blast bones a little bit more but this also does give us a resistance buff while creating another corpse on death death not death we run shuffle uh shuffle gives us major evasion for 20 seconds decreasing that area of effect damage which is super super nice and then it also gives us five seconds of snare and mobilization immunity when we use this for some stam so this is our move primary movement skill major evasion some more percent mitigation very very strong finally our back bar ultimate is going to be temporal guard giving us minor protection on that back bar for another five percent damage reduction obviously this is going to be multiplicative with the pet but still I feel like I don't really need anything else super bad on the back bar, so I just prefer to go for the more percent mitigation. You also do some tricky plays with the temporal guard if you want to, to try to reset your position, like jumping off a tower and going back up. You also get a nice little shield when you block, which is pretty cool. But if you go dots, I super don't care about minor protection now. What I would recommend running instead is running the spell wall morph of shield wall on that back bar instead, because it is a super, super strong defensive ultimate. Now, in terms of our stats, we are sitting at 11.4k maximum magicka, 28k maximum health, 30k maximum stamina, 1350 stamina recovery, uh, 3300 unbuffed weapon damage, almost 3400 unbuffed weapon damage. Weapon critical is not super, super high. Um, I do run crit pots, though, so when we pop the potions, we are running uh, major savagery, health restoration, and stamina restoration. When we pop that, we do go up to 36% weapon critical. Not the highest, but, you know, not terrible. Uh, we have 12.7k physical and spell resist on the front bar, going to 16.2k physical and spell resist on the back bar with 2,800 critical resistance. We get a, I know some of you might be like that resistance seems really low, but we do get a lot of our mitigation from 
her set mitigation sources. So that is something to keep in mind. Now, I do run an Imperial. I'm a huge fan of Imperial. I do think Imperial is a super, super uh, underrated race. You get some sustain from Red Diamond, giving you an additional 3% cost reduction at all times and getting some magic of stamina and health back you know, like every five seconds, whenever you deal damage, you also get massive boost to your health and stamina, which is super, super cool. Like you get a really good looking stat pool from being an Imperial. But if you go dots, I don't need the sustain. I don't care about those max health pools. And you, you want to do something else in the build. I would probably recommend Nord as the other race for the build. Um, Nord will still give you a good boost to stamina and health, but also give you that giant boost to your resistances. So if you do feel like you're a little squishy running the Imperial, you can feel free to run the Nord. Nord would also be a great option. Just keep in mind, you will be taking a bit of a sustain hit when you do so. We also are running the Warrior Mundus for the extra weapon damage. And in terms of our food, we are running the Lava Foot Soup and Saltrice, giving us 451 stamina recovery and 4,500 maximum stam. Good thing about this build is that we get a plenty of health from being an Imperial and the rest of our gear. So we are able to go 64 into stam and run the Lava Foot food and still have 28k health while we PvP, which is pretty cool. Now, in terms of our champion points... We are going to be running 32 into Blessed, 81 into Master at Arms, 56 into Precise Strikes. You could probably lower this a little bit more. Uh, 37 into Piercing and 64 into Mighty. You could probably lower this a little bit, maybe put some more points into Mighty or put some more into Piercing. Um, but if you want to try to get those big crit hits, you can keep all 56 points here. 72 into Ironclad, 31 into Resistant, 37 into Thick Skin. We do run a, a cleanse, so I don't need more than this, really. 49 into Hardy and Ellie Defender, and 32 into Quick Recovery. 56 into Warlord, 8 into Sprinter, 75 into Mooncalf, 66 into Shadow Ward, 40 into Tumbling, and 25 into Befal, just to boost up our Defile a little bit. In terms of a rotation for this build, I kind of went over it when I did the skill section. Um... I mean, dizzying swing builds all play pretty similarly. You're just going for the big burst, right? So basically, you are going to drop your Blighted Blast Bones. You're going to hit them with a dizzying swing. You are going to then hit them with Onslaught. And then the Blast Bones and the Onslaught will hit the off-balance target for 10% increased damage. And then you can hit them with the second dizzying swing if you want. And then go into execute. It's literally just... Dizzying Swing, Unblighted Blast Bones, and Onslaught. Just use those three skills in conjunction, and you're going to be dealing absolutely massive damage to your opponent. If they're getting low and, you know, they are not dead, just use Executioner instead. Uh, you want to always make sure to maintain Rally for, you know, making sure that you're building up that heal over time. I actually don't think I talked about Rally. I just realized that now that I... Uh, went through my skills. Uh, Rally does give us 20% increase to our weapon damage via Major Brutality and 20% increase to our recovery via Minor Endurance. And when this effect ends, we are healed by how long Rally was active. So the longer Rally was active, when we refresh it, we get a much bigger heal. So making sure to maintain Rally at all times is super, super, super important, along with maintaining our Summoner's Armor, our Major Evasion from Shuffle, and our pet we want to maintain these things at all times when you do drop a corpse on the ground you absolutely want to try to pick up a heal with your mortal coil so you got a bit of buffs to maintain while you're playing this build you got three on the back bar one on the front bar and then trying to always make sure that you maintain mortal coil when you are actively fighting because it is a huge 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 heal um but between those defensive capabilities and just smashing Dizzying Swing, Wide of Blast Bones, and Onslaught, you are going to be absolutely blowing people up. I mean, I'm sure you saw in the clips from the beginning, you deal absolutely massive amounts of burst damage and are extremely tanky and hard to take down. But guys, that is going to be it for me today on my Stamina Necromancer PvP build on behalf of Nemesis Esports. I want to thank you guys for stopping by this video today. If you do want to check out the written version, you can find it over on my website, DotsGaming.com. If you guys like this video, smack a like on it. If you guys would like to subscribe to the Nemesis Esports channel, feel free to give them a sub. They, I'm going to be releasing more builds here, and they are going to be releasing a ton of other gaming content as well. I also do believe they might have a Markarth giveaway going on at some point, so check in the description, pinned comments all those places in case there is a giveaway going on there. So thank you guys for stopping by this video today. I appreciate it. I'm Dots Gaming, and I'll see you all next time.